Okay. We shall move on. All right. We have the uh, continued from the October 29th meeting discussion and consideration of possible action on the waterfront re revitalization. And before I turn this over to the staff, just just you know a few things here. Uh, everybody's going to get a chance to talk. Okay. Uh, I'd like, regardless of your opinion, please respect other people's opinion. It's my turn to talk. It's my turn to talk and your turn to shut up. My eyes have seen the glory. This could be a long meeting, okay? So we're all going to have patience tonight, but just show a common courtesy to everybody else uh, from us up here and back to both ways. Anyway, I will turn it over to staff, and would you like to take the reins? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, and members of the audience who are here tonight on this important item. Uh, this is another step in an almost 10-year process uh, that the uh, City Council, uh, the staff, and the community have been going through uh, to look at reviving our waterfront. Uh, the word respect's been used a lot tonight already. Um, and going to use it again. Uh, the waterfront proposals that we have and the actions that are proposed before the City Council uh, are intended to best respect the heritage of this community, which has been uh, one that's been focused on the beach and the harbor and our waterfront, a heritage where we've had uh, a long history of being a port community, a community uh, that uh, enjoyed having visitors and uh, a heritage of, uh, of our local residents enjoying the waterfront. It's respect for uh, the voters. Uh, the voters have uh, uh, declared with their vote that uh, uh, this is what our uh, waterfront uh, uh, should be. Resulting in Measure G, which um, as we know provided new waterfront zoning, um, was subsequently approved by the voters and certified by the California Coastal Commission. People here really believe that, you know, you could call our project a mall. I don't think the issue is so much mall as, as G. The issue is, do you believe in Measure G? We put in 400,000, that's the number. We rounded it up because the council, under Mr. Workman's um, thing, recommended 750,000 square feet. I mean, the, the, the Planning Commission. 750,000 square feet. We lowered it from, from 1.4 million, didn't stop at 750, lowered it down to 400,000, rounding up from the 325 that was the 1992. That's what became Measure G. That's what the people voted on. Let me just read the Measure G ballot language to everyone so that they get an idea of why, you know, what Measure G was and the fact that uh, uh, what the public thought they were voting for. Measure G. Shall the coastal land use plan and the zoning ordinance for the coastal zone for the AAS power plant site, the Catalina Avenue corridor, and harbor pier areas of the city of Redondo Beach be amended to provide for major changes in existing policies and development standards, including affirming coastal commission recommendations, limiting the total development, height limitations, uh, floor area ratios, permitting parks on the AAS site, and gaining additional local authority to issue coastal development permits. That's what Measure G was. There's nothing in there about, uh, uh, you know, uh, building a large uh, uh, mall, basically. And one more thing, see, I forgot this. I brought these flyers from the Measure G, and I have to say, it says up here, protect your seaside lagoon forever, vote for Measure G. I mean, that, those were the messages that people were getting when they supported Measure G, not <coughs> let's have a mall. <clears throat> okay. Fred Bruning, um, who is with us from Center Cal Properties. Um, I, I actually should have one of those signs. I agree completely. Uh, there should be no mall. You want to grab one? Yeah. Uh, but, but I do think, honestly, the Sorry, issue here. Sorry, you can, you can hold them up. You just, it's just blocking the view of the people behind you, but that's fine. I want to introduce Larry Cosmont. Um, Larry, as you know, uh, has been our real estate consultant. The, this project, as it has been worked through the uh, public conversation, a variety of, uh, of planning charrettes and meetings, as well as a number of uh, public sessions here in the city council, 
is producing a um, what we call a lifestyle center project. It's oriented to the water. It's retail based. It has office. It has hotel. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Jeff Green. Oh no, I can see you guys. Okay, I took a look at some other nearby lifestyle centers that are about the same size as what we're looking at. Uh, Plaza El Segundo, for example, does um, the lifestyle center. It does, uh, and I get that uh, it, because it is easy, I think, for people to characterize all malls as a mall. Us alternatives, you know, we basically have this huge mall, and I'm going to call it a mall because it's a mall. And the, the, your own uh, consultant here called uh, compared us to Plaza El Segundo, and we all know what that is. And they want to call it a lifestyle center, but ultimately, I mean, it's a large project. I think it's a power center with a lifestyle component. So I think the largest part of El Segundo is a power center, and that's what I don't like about it. I know this project, I, in my heart, I know this project works. Uh, I ha you know, if we were to try to downsize it, if maybe during the scope of the environmental review, we'd be happy to look at things and go over numbers with the community and, and, and meet with you, but I'm just not sure it does work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to admit I could be wrong, but that's my gut. Mm -hmm. Well, that's been one of the big problems I've had with our staff is not bringing alternatives. You know, we basically have this huge mall, and I'm going to call it a mall because it's a mall. And the, 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 your own uh, consultant here called uh, compared us to Plaza El Segundo, and we all know what that is. And they want to call it a lifestyle center, but ultimately, I mean, it's a large project. I think it's a power center with a lifestyle component. So I think the largest part of El Segundo is a power center, and that's what I don't like about it. But the issue really isn't mall. I mean, calling our project a mall is like calling the ocean a desert because they both have sand. I say, are we talking mall or are we talking stall? It's about restoring, uh, restoring the harbor enterprise. One phrase, fixer-upper. It's about rebuilding. It's uh, rebuilding our uh, local economy uh, that's still under stress. Cities have all sorts of fixer-uppers. It's about rebuilding the infrastructure in the harbor. And the first step is to try and create a vision for that. Vision is not visible. The second step is to entice a private entity in spending money on something that is perhaps unproven, somewhat risky, and without which that private investment would come would be the necessity to have the public sector step up and make that investment. That's a fixer-upper. Can you get in the subsequent years of the lease, years 30, 55, and 80, the city would share in the profit of the project to the tune of 25% after uh, Center Cal hits their 10% return. A couple of photos that we've shared before just to provide some perspective. Um, a very interesting shot. This is the uh, Basin 3 and the waterfront along with Pacific Avenue and, and the former downtown Redondo Beach. Uh, many years ago during construction, um, provides some perspective on really where the harbor has been, uh, where it is today, and, and um, you know, at this crossroads, as the city manager mentioned, as to where it's going in the future. Um, also shown here is, is the immediate aftermath of the fire and storm of 1988, which um, was in, in many ways when this revitalization process uh, started, at least figuratively, uh, many years ago. Well, let's see, 88, we burnt down a pier. And between 88 and 94, we rebuilt a pier at millions of dollars. Can I ask um, you a couple questions, Jeff, about your study? Um, yeah. How long did you have to do this study? How many days? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks? Yep. Well, because I... Um... Please, please. Jeff. <clears throat> yeah, I agree it's an investment for the future. Okay. That's been my take on it from... Anybody from the audience? <clears throat> Good evening, Delia Becky, District 2. Revitalizing the waterfront Move was... Move it down, Lord, tell you. Sorry. We want to be able to hear you. Now it's better? That's better. Okay. Good evening. I start all over. Go ahead. Revitalizing the waterfront was and is the dream of everybody. Selecting Center Cal for the job was a big mistake. Center Cal announced from the first day of their presentation that Center Cal was planning to build a mall, and that's what they are proposing while pretending they have listened to the public. This developer that doesn't know the difference between inland projects around busy arterias and a waterfront 
Norris Division brought forth design smart enough to make economic sense. Now, the city is proposing a deal to the center cal benefit. The bottom line of this tragedy is the consequence, the financial responsibility which will end in the hands of the city and its taxpaying residents. What is in the mind of the city staff pushing for approval of this MOU? In accounting terms, it is considered irresponsible and unacceptable to propose this kind of deal that can become a default to the taxpayers, another economic burden and obligation. I would like to remind the city staff that they also are working thanks to the city taxpayers' base. I wonder also why the agreement between the city and CDM Smith for consulting service on Clause 13, conflict of interest, the only conflict that has been taken in consideration was between CDM Smith and the city. But what happened if they, they have connection with Center Cal? The consultant will be responsible for the EIR, and as a consequence, CDM Smith must be totally unbiased. In regard to receive and file feasible analysis of this magnitude, I wonder how a serious and credible one can be done in a few days. And tonight I found that also they have connection with, with uh, Center Cal. To conclude, people like to gather, to be outside. The waterfront is a magnet with its beauty. People go there to celebrate life and nature and have a sense of community. They go to enjoy open space, the water, five-star restaurants, cafes, not to be inside air-conditioned theaters having dinner inside them or shop as they do in a regular mall. Please do not approve the contract with CDM Smith. Do not approve the first and second amendment to MOU and reject the feasible analysis. Thank you. I want an independent third party analysis and I'd actually like to see the scope opened, okay? So I will slow this down because I've only been here for two or three months, not 75 years. So I'm worried about my kids, I'm worried about my grandkids as well, but I'd like to take the time uh, I'd like to get a third party, a truly independent uh, analysis, and I would like the city of Redondo Beach to pay for it. I'd like to see it not exceed $50,000, and I'd like to see RFPs go out. I'd like to see two or three folks come back. I'd like to see the council pick the independent third party guy to do the analysis. Um, so I can tell you without, I can tell the rest of my colleagues with, with, without what I was promised, by, I'm just going to say, you all, um, there's no way I'm going to vote for this. Good. Good. He comes out of his shell. Uh, one of the things I'll, I, you know, where, where we addressed the crowd, we're supposed to be convincing each other how to vote, but uh, if you were this loquacious back in June or, or July, we wouldn't be here. Now. I was absorbed. I know, but you have to. For somebody to do something, you have to make a motion, okay. get a second, and do all that. So well, there's a motion. Brown Act violation, if this would have been dealt with the proper way, we wouldn't be trying to have remedial training up here. So I'm kind of irritated about this. Yeah. There was no Brown Act violation because of our city manager. It was because you didn't want to get educated. So with that said, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn it around. No, I'm going to turn around. And I'm saying this, and we're, I'm, we, we could talk the truth up here. He, we have to do this now because of the of your inability to get it back when, when, when we tried to help you. So, if you want to make a friendly amendment to this. And in the beginning, it started off as, you know, this is not going to be a mall. This is going to be, you know, a different situation that we're going to have here. We put a lot of dots on maps and did that several times. But then, uh, it just did a 180 instead of, uh, go to the next slide. We're, yeah, I mean, it does. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And an amendment. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Thank you. Happy Wednesday. 12 20.